Hello, you are watching the MLX basic palletizing tutorial. This tutorial builds on previous tutorials and assumes that the viewer is familiar with the concepts of teaching positions in MLX, as well as configuring and defining user coordinate frames. If you are not familiar with these concepts, please visit the website listed below to watch the earlier tutorials. The purpose of this video is to show how to use frame shifts and user frames together to create powerful and flexible application code for palletizing and for case packing. First, we will define what a frame shift is and how they are used from MLX, and then we will look at an example palletizing application. A frame shift is simply a TCP offset that applies to the target position of a motion command. Frame shifts are often used in palletizing and case packing where the offsets between product placements is known. For example, the picture on the right shows a pallet with nine boxes on it. In this case, a position could be top on the top of box one, and the same target position along with the frame shift could be used to move to the top of the other boxes. In MLX, a frame shift is set using the MLX robot set frame shift instruction. This instruction takes an MLX frame shift data variable that contains the translation and orientation values of the offset and also a coordinate frame variable that defines whether the shift is relative to the world frame or the active user frame. Once a frame shift has been activated, this offset will be applied to all subsequent motion commands until another frame shift is applied. To reset a frame shift offset, a user can call a frame shift command with all offsets set to zero. One important thing to note on frame shift instruction is that it can be placed in between motions and ladder code to allow blending between motions with different offsets. For example, this shows a simple ladder with two frame shifts and two linear motions. In this case, the motion between the two linear moves will be blended and the first motion will be offset by pallet shift zero and the second motion will be offset by pallet shift one. The example application we'll be looking at will be a palletizing robot picking parts off of a conveyor and placing them on two different pallets. We will use user frames to define the pallet locations and then frame shifts to produce the offsets between the parts. First, we teach the user coordinate frames for each pallet and store them in user frame zero and user frame one. The procedure for how to teach these frames is discussed in an earlier tutorial video and will not be shown in detail here. Next, we teach a total of four teach points. There are two for the approach and pick positions on the conveyor and then two for the approach and place positions of the first box on the pallet. The teach points on the pallet are taught in user coordinate mode so that the positions are relative to the user frames that we taught. Now, we will show the application logic that will perform this entire palletizing operation with just two user frames and four teach positions. Now you can see the ladder code for this application. The first rung of this ladder sets the frame shift offset back to zero and then does an access motion to above the conveyor and a linear motion to the conveyor pick position. These are the same teach points that were shown on the last slide. On the next rung, the robot is commanded to move back above the conveyor with a linear motion, and a set user frame instruction is used to activate a user frame. Then a frame shift is called and an index of an array called pallet shift is passed as the offset values. Let's quickly look at what this array looks like. As you can see, this is simply an array of offset values that describes the pattern of positions on the pallet. There are six parts on this pallet example, but it would be simple to expand the structure for any number of positions. Going back to the ladder program, you will see that an axis absolute motion is then issued to command the robot above the pallet and a linear motion is used to move to the pallet place position. These two positions are the ones which we will be shifting as the program executes. Also note how the motion commands, user frames, and frame shifts are all on the same rung. Finally, a linear motion is used to move the robot back above the pallet place position, and the current offset index is incremented. If the incremented value is larger than the max index, we are set the index to zero. Now let's look at a simulation of this program running. Now you can see this program executing. As the robot is picking parts from the conveyor, it is cycling through the place positions on the pallet, even though the same teach position is being commanded. Thus, using frame shifts has allowed us to teach only two points on the pallet. One other thing to note is that if I go back to the 
ladder logic and change the user frame to one, which is the palette on the left, you will see that the robot starts placing parts on the second palette. This is a very flexible way of programming an application because now if I wanted to move a palette or even add a new palette, all that I would need to do is teach a new user frame and the same application logic would execute. So we've created a very simple palletizing example that is able to cycle through patterns on multiple palettes with only four total points being taught. One thing that I would like to mention before ending this video is that Yasukawa Moto Man also offers a fully packaged palletizing solution called Pallet Solver. This allows for very powerful offline pattern generation and also contains MLX HMI screens for configuring, monitoring, and executing these patterns. For more information, please follow the link at the bottom of this slide. Thank you.